Hey, this Thinker Thunker. This photo was posted on my Team Thinker Thunker Facebook group. It's getting a good amount of chatter and was posted by this guy right here, Christopher Noel, who just happens to be an old online buddy of mine and an amazing Bigfoot researcher. Hey, Christopher, thank you so much for sharing this, uh, this image with us. Go check out his stuff on Facebook and YouTube. So what do we know about this photo? Well, reading down here on the bottom, it says, Bigfoot was caught on Ridgeline on a mountaintop in 1981. That's all we know. So are there some red flags here? Yeah, you bet. I rarely, if ever, put any stock whatsoever in a photo, but, you know, it's still worth a look. So let's go check it out. <laughs> okay, so we could argue about this thing's arm length, you know, or its head shape or its muscularity, or its lack of muscularity. I mean, frankly, the, the, the Patterson, you know, Patty, the forest giant, she looks like she could rip this thing in half. But who knows, maybe maybe it's a 12-year-old forest giant. Maybe it was sick for, for a while, and that's why it's just standing there looking kind of lost. The point is, while it might be fun to discuss all of that, it's all just speculation, and it, it proves absolutely nothing. Now we have proof. Simple, scientific, measurable, repeatable proof. So let's just simply measure this thing and know 100% for sure what it is. No more scratching our heads. No more wondering. Let's just do it. Okay, so the easiest, quickest way to measure this guy or gal, whatever, is to go with what we can see. We, we need to find all the major body joints. Well, we can see the ankle and we can see its leg bent. So we've got its shin. So I'm going to measure starting about right there. Come up to about right there, something about like that. And since we know that human shins and thighs are roughly the same length, I just took a copy of that first measurement bar. Now we've got our leg measurement. And now since we know that the hip socket is right around in this area, we know the tailbone, the bottom of the tailbone is just below that. So I measured from the bottom of the tailbone up to the base of the neck. And now I'm going to measure its arms, just like I did its legs. We can, we can see its wrist. We can see its elbow. So we've got that measurement. And then I just doubled the forearm and copied that up for its upper arm. Since our human forearms and upper arms are roughly the same size. There we go. There are our five main measurements. And I've posed a skeleton so that we could see where everything lines up, I would say plus or minus 1% margin of error. We see the hip socket right there, which lines up and the tip of the tailbone up to the base of the neck. For those of you who've read my new book, Salt, which is out on Amazon, thank you very much for reading that. You know that I call this system a graphical measurement, charting and comparison species identification system, which is a mouthful, I know. So I gave it a nickname. I call it proportional DNA or even shorter, pDNA. So look at these five different measurement bars here. Can you see if, if the arms are longer than legs, about the same length? Uh, are they longer than the torso? It's kind of hard to tell with them all still placed on the body. So now comes the charting part of this. I just made a little bar chart, pulled them all over. You can see they're all color coded. So we can see now that whatever this thing is, it has a torso and arms roughly the same length with legs about 30% longer. So now all we have to do is find a species out there that matches these body proportions perfectly. Okay, we are all but done here. Big comparison time. Have a look. I have pulled in the PDNA charts for two other species over here on the, on the right. We've got red team and green team. Use your eyes. Which one of these two teams more closely resembles our, uh, our blue team over here? And I think it's pretty, pretty easy to see that red team with its torso and arms, the same relative length with legs about 30% longer is pretty much a perfect match. Whereas green team looks nothing like the other two. Green team has a torso and arms, which are about 20 percent longer than, than blue and red team with legs that are roughly the same length as its torso and arms. So now here's the big reveal. Red team represents 
the body proportions of every normal, typical adult human being on the planet. It doesn't matter if you're male, female, no matter ethnicity, these are your body proportions. You've got a torso and arms, the same relative length, with legs about 30% longer. So blue team is in fact red team and matches and is 100% for sure a dude in a monkey suit, or at least an AI figure with human body proportions. And green team over here represents all of forest that kind. I measured Patty the exact same way I measured blue team over here. And these are her body proportions. Again, she's got a torso and arms and legs all the same relative length. There is not another large primate. There is not an another large species on the planet with body proportions even remotely close to green team. Uh, there's also not another species that has body proportions even remotely close to red team. That's why I say these measurements don't have to be perfect because look at the jaw dropping differences between red team and green team. Okay, so you, you hoaxers thinking you're cool, thinking you're clever using artificial intelligence to fake a Bigfoot photo. First, photos don't really count because they've always been much easier to manipulate than videos. But now they can be easily proven a fake in like two or three minutes just by using my proportional DNA, my PDNA. And the thing is, you, you could get on and tell an AI engine at a prompt. You could say, make the torso 20% longer and the arms 20% longer and the legs 10% shorter. You can ask of AI to do all those things, but it has a mind of its own. Its chances are going to completely ignore you. So I'll say that we won't be seeing realistic Bigfoot fake photos that would fool even me like for a long, long time. Then there's video. I mean, AI isn't even trying to do Bigfoot video fakes yet. But the thing is, I'll say we won't see a Bigfoot AI fake video that could fake even me in our lifetime because they would have to get the body proportions just right. And they would have to get the body mechanics just right. All the things that I've discussed over the past decade. I mean, there's a lot of things they would have to do that chances are artificial intelligence is not going to get right. Plus then it has to get fur, the movement of fur right. And that's still pretty much impossible, even for like the, the best highest budget 3D movies. So for those of you who are all upset and all worried, thinking that artificial intelligence is going to, from this point on, make it impossible to know whether a photo or video is real or fake. That's simply not true. You watched me in like two or three minutes, take five simple measurements and prove 100% that this shaggy thing over here on the left is nothing but a dude in a monkey suit. Or at the very least, it has red team human body proportions. Because here is the thing you have to remember. Man created artificial intelligence, which means artificial intelligence has man's bias against Bigfoot built into it. You know, 99.999% of the general public believes Bigfoot is a joke. They've never heard of Thinker Thunker, or they've never read my book Solved. They've never heard of proportional DNA. They don't have the slightest idea that we now have simple scientific, measurable, repeatable proof that big furry giants are real. So they think they can just throw anything out there and gullible suckers are going to fall for it, which simply ain't true anymore. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, thank my patrons and YouTube members, their generosity made it possible for me to share this with the general public. I could not be doing this research without their monthly support. And it's just a buck a month. If you want to be part of that, if you want to be part of having changed the world and, and provided the world with, with proof of four shots, become a member or become a patron or go buy my book solved or my, one of my t-shirts or caps or beanies, or at the very least, 
you can hit the subscribe button to say thank you. It doesn't cost you one red cent. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Take care.